there are two different types of diversity that I want to speak about in our classrooms. The first is cultural diversity. Uh, in our classroom of 30 students, we should expect that 10 are English language learners, meaning that they have difficulty learning in the English language. Uh, to expand on this a little bit, uh, I'll give the example of my dad. So for a lot of us, you know, buying something on Amazon is fairly easy. Uh, but for my dad, it's like, no, I need to call my son and I need him to help me do it because every single little interface element on just a simple web page is a real problem. And this is uh, something that I noticed uh, having visited a number of churches this week uh, and last week was that there is now the requirement to register for certain sites. And I often don't get to see um, what happens inside the service because I'm giving up my seat for uh, the people who come a little bit later. And who are the people who come a little bit later? These are not people who are trying to cheat your system. They are people who are English language learners. They have a hard time using the online system, right? They tried and they were not able to do it. It seems simple for us. Just, you just need to register. But for them, it's quite difficult because they're not familiar with the language. Uh, and so every interface element is, is, is a challenge. So I met a lady, uh, Melinda, and she was running up to the service and she was crying. She's like, I tried really hard to, to book with the system. I couldn't figure it out. Like I'm, I'm not born in Canada. Um, and I, I just couldn't access the system, but I need, I need church. I need to be in the service. I need to be in the service today because I've tried the online church service and I just don't feel in the presence of God. And when she told us this, it, it really, it broke my heart, but it also reminded me about how important this topic of diversity and inclusion is. The way that we see the world is not the way that somebody who is an English language learner sees the world. And that can have a big impact on, on how, we, uh, how we educate. Now, the second is um, neurological diversity. So in a typical classroom of 30 students, you should expect three students with mild, moderate, or gifted special educational needs two students with severe special educational needs, and one student with multiple diagnosed special educational needs. And so how do we handle all of this diversity, both neurological and cultural or custom diversity in our classrooms? And now, of course, it's easy to say, like, of course, we need some more teacher training, but what kind of teacher training uh, would be the most beneficial? Well, my argument is that we can actually look at the research uh, when it comes to what are the recommendations. And I'll be covering those two when I talk about purpose and effect and customs and culture. Those come directly from the research. Uh, and so I'm, I'm very excited to be able to share that with you today. Just as a recap, diversity is the norm in Calgary's classrooms. On average, a Calgary classroom of 30 students can expect 10 students who are coded as English language learners, meaning they are unable to communicate fluently or learn effectively in English. Three students that are coded as having mild, moderate, or gifted spe special educational needs. And one to two students that is coded as having severe special educational needs. And of course, zero to one students that is coded as having multiple special educational needs. This diversity now also needs to consider the impact of the pandemic. A spring, 21, 20, a spring 2021 McKinsey report on 1.6 million elementary students in North America found that 2021 student scores fell compared to the, their historical averages, of course. So roughly about 10% uh, lower or five months behind in mathematics and about 9% lower or four months behind in reading. 
So this gap was even larger for students of color and those in low income households. One additional month in math and reading uh, behind for black and Hispanic students and two additional months behind for families with average household income of less than $25,000. The data showed that these gaps were widening. A majority black school were on average three months behind when school started in September 2020. But by the end of the school year, they were six months behind in May 2021. So the gap had doubled. The kids are going to give up if we don't do something now. The McKinsey report warned that kids are going to just give up if we don't do something now. Now, a 2020 survey of 16,000 parents reported that 5%, like basically a 5% increase in students diagnosed with anxiety and a 6% increase in students diagnosed with depression, despite doing less tests than in 2019. It also found that the number of absences increased on average by 2 to 5%. So what can we do about this? Well, that's where I'm going to dive into a little bit more about purpose and effect, uh, because I think understanding some of these practices is going to help us a lot in terms of our understanding of what is the effect of different policies, especially when it comes to like your uh, board of trustees. They make a lot of decisions. They implement policies. Well, what do these policies do? What is the effect of them? And there are just two different aspects, the purpose and the effect. So I think these are, uh, it's a good area to cover.